Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yikes. Yikes. With no air conditioning. <laughs> oh, I thought you're muted, apparently. I could hear you. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Oh, hello? It, it just wasn't using the right microphone. Interesting. OBS wasn't using the right microphone for some reason. Um, oh, all just I was me talking sitting about, here in silence being about weird. Was, was bitching about how hot it is and how hot it's going to be next week. With next Tuesday, 37 degrees Celsius, I want to die. That's really all y'all missed out on. Um, Bell is pulling a sicky wiki. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know why. She's just not feeling very well. So, um, it's going to be me and Laura today. We're going to talk about last session. Uh, but also, since it's me and Laura. And next week... Um, yeah, the fucking Duke's podcast with Dallas was really enjoyable, actually. And apparently... Little, little scoop. Apparently, uh, he's going to... Because he talked about... Getting the writer for um, Storm Chasers. But apparently that is like Ooh. happening soon. Like it's set in stone. It's happening. So that's gonna be fun. Definitely nice. fun to look out for. Guys, fucking check out Duke's podcast. It's Pog. Uh, Duke, you're a VIP. Do you want to fucking link drop some some links to where people can listen link to your podcast? Drop your shit. Fucking go for it. Um, I gave it five stars on Apple Podcasts. I gave it five stars on Spotify. Pog there you. you. Go. Um, Help me. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, so. It's just me and Laura. We're going to talk. This is probably going to be like a two-part episode where the first half we're going to do our usual Dungeon Discord stuff and then we're going to transition into talking about the fucking Call of Netherdeep campaign that's starting next week uh, I... on Laura's channel. Uh, the... Next week. Week after? No, no, next, no next, next week, right? Technically. Yeah, well, because this, this weekend, yeah, I know. Saturday, or the weekend after, after this so weekend. So technically next week. I'm not wrong. It's technically yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> We're, you know, I'll be, I'll be a player. Laura is the DM. Uh, some familiar faces are going to be in there because I know Bowdy is playing. He's been on uh, Dungeon Select before. Uh, Ismera has been on the channel before during the the Witcher one shot, for instance. And I yeah. think also when you ran your, was it on your channel? And yeah, she, she's been in. She's been in the. I think she was in the one I did. I think it might have been on my channel. It was the one shot I did. Uh, the Sky Secrets of Skyhorn Lighthouse one shot. I'm pretty sure she was in. Was she I don't the, remember if we did that the, here or on my fucking, channel. What you call it? The Gay Stivities? Whatever the fuck wasn't she? No, on, um, she gay, gay oh. Stivities was Johnny, Bell, Christy, and Hallucin. Oh, I thought she, uh, I thought she was in there. Uh, regardless, she's no. been on DS before, so she's going to be in that campaign uh, along with some new faces. So it's going to be. Yeah, uh, I'm very excited. I'm stoked as fuck. So we're going to talk about that, and maybe I'll talk a bit about my character and and all that shit. Yeah. Maybe I can get Laura to. Spill some, some spill, tea, sp some spill some <laughs> spill some some secrets. Who knows? Um, yeah. First things first. Uh, announcement wise, uh, no DS this Sunday because I'll be at TwitchCon. Uh, I'm gonna be hanging mainly with uh, Opti and Bowdy Ooh. for the weekend. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be a good time. We're gonna go to Amsterdam tomorrow evening to get our badges the day before, so that we don't have to stand in line mm -hmm. all of Saturday to get our fucking badges because it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. I think Ismira's gonna be there too. So. No, she couldn't. She oh, she's couldn't, not. She couldn't. No. no yeah. I, oh, I hit her up. I know she was, was trying. Yeah, I hit her up and I was oh, like, "Yo, damn. so is this happening?" And it's not, unfortunately. Damn. Yeah. Damn. 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 But uh, there's a couple of people there that I definitely want to link up with. Some some homies that I uh, I'm excited to to meet and have a drink with and all that stuff. So that's gonna be fun. Um, otherwise announcements. I might run. The occasional one shots here or there throughout the summer on the ds channel just for some extra content because it's it's summer and all i'm doing is like i work two days a week and there's a week i do fuck all so i have time on my hands who knows uh so we'll see about that i'll, I'll let you guys know uh do you have anything to announce well just we're gonna talk a bit more about it but yeah the called another deep campaign on my channel starts mm -hmm. soon um 
immediately after Dungeon Discourse today, I'm going to go live on my own channel because the new summer update and Blood Hunt just dropped. So we're going to be looking at that and I'm very excited. Nice. Dude, Blood Blood new Hunt Battle Pass, doing... new game mode, new cosmetics, new quests, so much shit. I'm Blood so Hunt are doing a lot of things around TwitchCon in Amsterdam. For they are, enough. they have a booth. There's, there's, they have they a have booth. A booth there. there's, also, there's also a train or a bus driving around Amsterdam that is like completely Blood Hunt oh, Blood Huntified. Um, that's fun yeah it's pretty cool so i'm gonna check that out see if there's um, some free some free goodies that i can yoink or something who knows um yeah who knows who knows who knows um so yeah i'll start off with a bit of a recap just to refresh the memory of, of what happened and 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 where we're going next when it comes to dungeon select um last session you guys cleared your way through the basement of the uh, death house as it is called um the house of the durst family who have and i'm, I'm excited to kind of give you because there's a lot of things that you haven't really exp uh, discovered or explored that i can talk about now because it's over and done with right uh and it's not really going to impact anything plot wise anyway because it's kind of like a its own secluded thingy um but you made your way through there and found your way down to a a chamber where a bunch of apparitions, spirits, ghosts, whatever you want to call it, um, appeared chanting, uh, asking for a sacrifice. And when you refused, they started chanting and summoned a shambling mound named Lorgoth the Decayed? Old? I thought it was the Decayer, Decayer, but that wouldn't make sense, actually. Decayer. Yes. Either way, it sounded yeah. like a World of Warcraft NPC to uh, me when you said did, it. Yeah. That was my um, first thought. <laughs> which you fought and bested. And with that, when you basically didn't appease the cult by, by fighting its and defeating its pet, not giving it the sacrifice it wanted, it turned the house on you. And when you tried to get out, all of the rooms were changed. The, the, any rooms with like fireplaces had this like heavy thick poisonous smoke in it the doors were all replaced with like this th these blades and shit that you had to go through every time you would break through an interior wall a swarm of rats or insects or whatever the fuck else would have appeared for you to fight and it kind of turned into a let's how how the fuck do we escape kind of thing uh very cool i really enjoyed that segment because it is i did very very little writing to that like the overall plot for that thing is straight from uh, origin like officially that is like the opening session or the opening one shot i guess that leads into curse of strad yeah the uh, teaser all i did was rewrite some of the uh motivations for mainly the children um and some of the things they 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 were supposed to do that i was like nah i'm not gonna make them do that and also um i re rewrote some stuff that you guys don't know about yet just to make sh make it fit in with 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 because uh, Strahd's motivation obviously has nothing to do with Curse of Strahd in this campaign it is I'm making him fit into the story that I'm trying to tell with with, with Dungeons Like Campaign 2 but like that part of things I'm not going to reveal because that will come up at a later date whenever the party decides to uh, run into him <laughs> which is basically uh, yeah like that could be yep, in a eventually. few weeks could be in a few months could be next year who knows but you know it's it's there it's possible um, and you, after escaping the house, uh, the children gave you one final thank you and disappeared, which, uh, or like kind of like evaporated, meaning that they found their rest finally and they moved on. Um, and you appeared back to your original campsite before you got taken away by the mist. You long rested and now it's just a half day travel to get to Strathmore, which means there's a whole new city for you guys to explore. A whole new city with a bunch of storylines oh, yeah. and NPCs and things you haven't seen yet. And that's always my the most exciting thing for me is when you guys get to like a proper city that you haven't been to yet. Because yeah. there's so much shit there. Mm -hmm. um, and you have three, because of Jax's fucking map juju, have three and a half days to kind of show <laughs> and explore the city. Explore the city map before juju. you're supposed to go pirating. So there's definitely some shit that I can have you do in the city, which is, which is going to be fun and cool. Meet some people and all yeah. that shit. I feel torn because part of me wants to do that and I know you're going to probably set up at least some things like that just because it'd be a pretty like living life on the edge DM move to set up nothing and just improv completely the whole thing. But I also kind of really, especially because 
we've had players missing as well for quite a few sessions and mm -hmm. it'll be the first time I think we're all going to be back. So outside of in-character reasons, but also then what's happened in-game in-character, I kind of want it to just be three days of like, just like it, discussions that need to be had and like yeah, party I mean, bonding be... and stuff like that. But then I'll feel like you'll probably prepare things that we're just going to not have time to do and I'll feel bad. I mean, if, I, if that happens, then it happens. <laughs> and then I ha just have that shit ready for whenever the fuck I decide. For the next yeah, city. <laughs> I mean, doesn't really matter. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna be fun. Looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Now we move on to a segment that uh, I added to the to the show. Since we kind of took a break from it, uh, we're gonna look at D and D tweet of the week, which is something that you submitted actually, Laura. It's the one that you submitted. Nice. Um, yes. <laughs> I've already forgotten what it was, but it's, I remember uh, I said you would. <laughs> basically, it kind of I I want to go into like a. a, a, a Kind of a, a a conversation about this, but it's, it's a good like segue into it. Yeah. Uh, about the best explanations of D and D. So Dungeon Dragons uh, is when people uh, when a, one person tells a story and the other people have a character who tries to survive that story, which is uh, an eight year old kid's uh, description or summary of what D and D entails. And that kind of leads yeah. me to like because I've had situations where I had to explain what D and D is to people who had no fucking clue, and I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you've had similar maybe yeah. not but i'm sure you'll have at least have have to have had at least one conversation of like oh yeah i played dnd &D. and like yeah. what's that yep how it's very easy i find to explain it to anyone in the arts world because again mm -hmm. i i worked in theater for so so long and i still have my foot in the theater opera performing arts world mm -hmm. and all i just say is um improvised collaborative storytelling and that's all and they're like oh cool and but that's because like D and D's performative in itself, in a way, right? A lot mm -hmm. of it fits very well with you know people that do stage or screen performance as a living. Yeah. So it's really easy when explaining to them, but explaining to like uh, my parents who are in like the medical and the like science researching world, or people in like corporate business world, yeah, they're like, what the hell? <laughs> a bit bit harder. <laughs> yeah, I always kind of because i have friends that don't know what D, D is but they'll they'll be they'll, they'll play video games but they just don't get what D, &D is what i always kind of def default to is i'll open it with like you ever play a game like skyrim or something they're like yeah i played that and i'm like okay imagine that but i'm the one that writes all the quests writes all the npcs right pr makes the world makes the people makes the quest lines and then the character that you normally play is played by a group of people that just go on, travel around, and do the things, do the quests, just like you would in Skyrim. And Sometimes, like, oh, even though your idiot. character's done it a million times before, you'll try and do a thing and the dice will say, not today! <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's kind of my, like, go-to uh, explanation. And they'll kind of get it, and I'm like, that's good enough. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have, the, I don't need them to fully understand yeah. and grasp what it is but at least they have, as long as they have some semblance of like oh i kind of get yeah i see i kind of yeah. get it that's good enough for me because yeah. it's fucking cba having to yeah sit the way i hours. describe it uh again other than those those three words a more elaborate description is imagine like when you go and see an improvised show except one person is kind of the one controlling the narrative flow of that improvised show while other actors are making choices within it and your choices are not guaranteed to succeed because you bring in a random element via the use of dice and that would be yeah but what i liked about this tweet and why i sent it to you is because it's both so accurate and so true but also i really dislike it because it also sets up that description sets up that antagonistic relationship yeah. almost between DM and players because they say one person tells a story, the others try to survive. It immediately becomes a bit of that competitive. And of course, the best D and D, mm -hmm. I, I want to say opinion, but I don't even think it's an opinion. I think it's a pretty established fact. Almost any D and D player who has had fun at a table and is welcome at a table will tell you the best D and D is when you're working together and it's like a team game with your DM. Like the yeah, DM cause... wants to have fun and succeed, they just can't give it to you because they gotta make exactly. you, you know? Exactly, so like for instance, when when you guys fucking, like when I like write a, a, a segment or like a story arc and I'm like, dude, this fucking boss fight is gonna be fucking gnarly. I get nervous because I don't want any of you to die. I want you guys to win, but I don't want it to be easy. Like I want to give you a challenge because I want it to be satisfying. Uh, I want you guys to you know, not blow through this, like, hyped-up boss fight in less than a round. Not even everybody had a turn. And then be like, oh, is that it? That So yeah. I try to make it hard. And um, my ideal boss fights would be, like, 
a couple of you go down, but you do all make it out alive. That that to me is like okay. Yeah, and that's that happened fight, for most that of our big fight fights. Was balanced enough to the point where it was scary. It could have gone bad, but it didn't. That is kind of yeah. what I try for all of my boss fights because I want you guys to really feel like you worked for that win. But when you win, when that happens, I'm fucking, I'm pogging there with you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, it's not that I'm sitting there, like, waiting for you to die. Soko's fucking mystic character was the exception. But other than that, <laughs> <laughs> other than that, uh, <laughs> yeah, because, like, um, it's definitely, um, it, well, okay, it depends on the campaign. I'll say that. Because, for instance, true. Uh, a campaign like Tomb of Annihilation is fucking brutal. Mm -hmm. uh, same with Curse of Strahd, for that matter. Fucking brutal. You are expected to lose at least one character and have it to re-roll because of just yeah. how hard, brutal, and unforgiving it is if you make mistakes. Yeah. And I feel like that is a campaign where it's okay for your DM to be a little more antagonistic. Yeah. But... I also um, feel like it's very different if everyone knows that coming in. Because mm -hmm. if you maybe... Some people enjoy that kind of D&D. &D, yeah, and if no, you establish sure. that this is that kind of campaign going in, then yeah. maybe that is... Then it will be great. Everyone will have fun. But if yeah. you're playing for, like, a style like ours, you go in thinking it's going to be a very long form, lots of, like, exploration and relationship building and, like, storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, and l less of a, like... Establish end game. There is a victor. There, there is a moment where we will either win or lose. Kind of this campaign, and ours isn't. There isn't really a win lose to a dungeon select. There's just like a how long can we tell the story and enjoy it, and then yeah. it just comes to an because end. We feel if, like it comes to an end. Say for campaign one, for instance. Say yeah, you guys lost and didn't beat Orcus. That is still the end of a pretty epic tale, which would completely alter the world. And campaign two would have been completely mm -hmm. different to what it is. Very now. different. I'm not gonna lie, and I feel bad for saying it, I almost kind of wanted that to happen, because I love the idea of a campaign two in a, not necessarily full-on post-apocalyptic, but a things ended badly, and now you have to go back and, like, my, try and fix it kind of thing, or live like, with the consequences. idea um, for that, um, say that would have happened, was you're playing this band of, 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 of people uh, that lived in a world completely taken over by Orcus and his minions, literally hell on earth. And you would be like the chosen group to fucking banish him back to the depths of the abyss kind of thing, uh, which would have been a fucking cool yeah. story to tell as well, you know? Uh, and, but it would have been a lot more brutal, would have been a lot harder. Um, I, I would have fucked with that too. Uh, but now that you've, you've won, so now I get to tell this story about this completely new continent that nobody really knows, and yeah. this like weird elemental power shift that's going on, and mm -hmm. also pretty cool. So you know, like it's a win-win yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, I get to tell a cool story, and you guys get yeah. to tell it with me. So like, whether I spent half my car ride home today, I'm not gonna lie, and I had like a two-hour drive for at least a good probably 45 minutes of that drive. I was trying to come up with a group name because we still don't really have an established like name for well, yeah. our band of people right but that has the elements tied into it now that was like how heavily linked like this elementals mm -hmm. storyline that we're clearly telling i couldn't come up with shit man I elementals, think I'm gonna, elements does not work well <laughs> last campaign i named the the heroes of exile right because after that was just what the campaign name was oh, the Kama, campaign kamikaze name. guy a viewer submitted that name yeah, yeah, but I'm, yeah but I'm saying names. like that's also what i named the campaign because i was like Fuck it, yeah, you know what I mean, but yeah, now yeah. I'm thinking because it's been so long and I hate having to ref ref refer to this campaign as oh, Dungeon Select Campaign 2. It sounds fucking annoying, yeah. it's very not yeah, marketable. Yeah. So I'm thinking <laughs> of just naming it, uh, not after the party, but just after something to the do story with the storyline or something, just for the sake of having a more like brandable. Yeah. Campaign name, you know what I mean? Uh, high rollers. For well, if you, if you come up with anything better than elements, <laughs> yeah. are you familiar with with high rollers? Yes, I haven't watched any yeah. yet, but the concept I fucking love. They... There's a theater group that does the same thing, and I've wanted mm -hmm. to watch it for ages. It's not a time. So they like they do that where their campaign is just called. They're just called epic fucking titles. Their campaigns based on yeah. that story. They're and that, that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing for this. Because it's been thirty plus sessions, almost forty, and <laughs> you know what I mean. So like, um, I fucking watched them 
um, play live once at TwitchCon in Berlin. They were doing a live oh, uh, D&D session. And they're doing it again in Amsterdam this weekend, so I might... Oh, I'm, I'm so with, jealous! I'm with Opti and fucking Bowdy, so I'm gonna be like, Hey boys, you wanna go watch some fucking D&D, dude? <laughs> so yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it was really fun, because um, it was there, like... You know, because they're all, they're all fucking British, right? They're... Um... Yeah. And I think their DM... Yeah, their DM played fucking... Um... The fucking dragon lady uh, in Critical Role. The, the, like, half dragon, half human or whatever. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I remember who you're talking about. Um, forget her name. She was, like, half elf, half dragon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget her name. But, like, so they, they're they talented fucking storytellers and, and D&D players, and, and they know what they're doing, which is it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So they named their campaigns as like a you know how wizard of the coast would name a fucking like adventure module right some like epic fucking title boom yeah rise of tiamat for instance you know what i mean like that sort of shit so i'm thinking yeah. maybe we should just go for that because waiting for you guys to pick out a fucking name for your party it's dragging on man <laughs> so yep oh well i mean we could also post um start post something in our dungeon select subreddit and be like hey friends what would you call no well the thing is just to see I think just a lot to get of players are already like kind of sold in character on like oh with the rep tag fuckwits and I kind, of, <laughs> I kind of fuck with it's funny you know what I mean as like an insight it's like how what I want is to be ragtag fuckwits and RTF for short and then by the end of the campaign we find something else that fits into the acronym yeah, RTF sure. And then, the, but is actually epic. But yeah, exactly. Like, it'll I mean, always so mean that's, to that's, us, uh, ragtag fuckers. It's funny. It's funny, and you know, like I don't mind you guys referring to yourselves as that because it's fucking funny. I just don't want to name the campaign that. <laughs> so I yeah, I'll, I know what you, of, I know what you mean. <laughs> I'll think of some some cool fucking name and throw it in the fucking DS chat and be like, hey, I'm thinking of moving forward to name DS campaign to this for the sake of it being yeah. brandable and whatever. Um. So yeah, we'll, we'll have, I'll have a phone on that. I have a couple of ideas floating around, but nothing really, nothing really. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with yet. something related to the elements, and I or like even just like nature, and I couldn't come mm -hmm. up with fucking shit. I was struggling. <laughs> yeah. Um. How do we even get on this tangent? I don't even fucking remember. I don't remember. Uh, names of modules, camp campaigns yeah, that like fuck. fit into that tweet we were talking about. Just and kind just, of sort of you know, um, yeah, yes. we have a question submitted by our very own broken ass man, Sir Duke Thirty Three, <laughs> uh, which would have been for both of you, but Bell's not here, so it's just for you, Laura. That's for me, haha. -ha. Um, I win. <laughs> what did you think slash hope would happen after you bury the invitation from Strahd? Well, in character, mm -hmm. Digan's the thought process. Other than this just seems funny. And she spent a lot of time with Kess. So Kess inevitably rubs off on her in some ways with her chaotic <laughs> bullshit. But it's like, what's harmless chaotic bullshit I can do versus <clears throat> Kess is just, what can I do? And like, Daigon's a bit more restrained. Yeah. But um, in character, aside from getting rid of it, because also there's been lots of groups like searching each other's stuff instigated by Kess. Kess has looked through Brooks's stuff. Kess is currently going to try and look through Davian's stuff. Uh, it's been like TZ. So I'm like, I don't know who's at any point is going to look in our bags and find this invitation. And to them, it might mean something mm -hmm. and they might get upset about it. So it was a chance to ditch it. And also the hope was the best case scenario was Saucy Spider Gang finds it knows who this and these initials are because Daigon doesn't know who Strahd is. Laura does. Um yeah. sees those initials and knows who that is, finds them scary, thinks, oh, these these here these people have ties to this guy. Oh, we don't want to fuck with them. Like in character it's like it's a very unlikely. It's a very grasping at straws. But maybe whoever this is is big enough to scare off the saucy spider gang from pursuing us actively mm -hmm. if they come back to find this chest. Out of character and also part of the bag searching. Out of character, it was the bag searching. It was also just we've been holding on to this since our session zero. And I'm kind of like getting not like impatient or antsy. Because I know it's going to happen at some point. Which is because you express so much interest in involving this character in our world at some point. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just to... Just to do it. And also, it's like, she didn't think it's that big a deal because it's been in-game <laughs> over, it's been like two months or something in-game mm -hmm. and nothing's happened. Like, we got this, like, ooh, super scary, sketchy invitation at the time. It was like, okay, 
some really sketchy shit happened, but then it's been silent for months. And even the wording of the invitation was like, find me if you can. It felt like very optional side quest, like optional challenge. And that was also Daigon's going, you know what? Fuck it. We're not doing this. Like we're not playing this game. And it's been two months and we've better shit to do now. We have these people to travel with. We have bigger fish to fry. Like, fuck this. So that you was, I guess, the lot well is like putting it in there. <laughs> Because but by, by me, by Dagon choosing, like, we don't want it. We don't care about this is what actually made it happen. <laughs> you know what's funny as well? It's just, like, from here on out, right? Because it tells you the the legend you got after the fact was, like, f whenever you're ready to talk, find the raven's nest or whatever, right? Yeah. And it's going to be so funny just throughout the next couple months. Just be like, arrive in a town. Oh, there's a shop called the raven's nest. Arrive in the next city over. Oh, there's a tavern called the raven's nest. Oh, arrive in like, oh. a town on the <laughs> other side of the fucking world. It's not a shop called the Raven's hey. Nest. Just fucking have that Raven's Nest fucking follow you around. You know what I mean? It's gonna be... Just tease us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I guess that's, yeah, the multifaceted. What, what was the question? Was the question why she did it or what she expected to happen? What did you think? I kind of answered. Happen. Okay, so yeah, what did the hope would happen was it would just scare. If this person was at all of a threat, it would scare off the Saucy Spider Gang if they found it. Mm -hmm. And also it was a way to make sure that the, the group didn't see it and then be like why didn't you tell us about this that part obviously backfired heavily yeah but... <laughs> uh, it's a two-part question by the way uh why did you choose yeah. to keep the information from the rest of the party uh well obviously at the beginning we were just getting to know them it's like this isn't your business why do we tell you it's a uh, your people we're traveling with for money and convenience and then obviously now that we're past that point and we're like <clears throat> friends and shit again it's not so much it was an active secret because Daigon and Kess don't know who Strahd is. It didn't even write Strahd. It was initials SVZ. All we know is it was some dude who managed to send us an invitation, but we don't know who they are. They maybe gave us some really creepy dreams before they sent it to us just to try and be spooky. So they're someone kind of scary. You know, they're not just like your average person. But then mm -hmm. we haven't heard from them in months. And there seem to be no consequences. And the thing that put us in touch with them, I can't go into details because that's also not been known to everyone in the party, but also implies... This isn't necessarily a good dude. Like, well, maybe you don't want to fuck with him. We can talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit, because it came... It, it, you have had that invitation since your session zero. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, well, because it was stealing the amulet. TLDR is, because like, the, the viewers know, and the majority of the party knows, that you're involved with this group that steals yeah. magical things for the sake yeah. of not having them fall in the wrong hands, yeah. or that is the guys, that is the, that is the, the sales pitch they use. Um... And yeah, you just kind of did that. Turns out, oh, belonged to that guy, and yeah. he was like, "Oh, hold Me on, no like he. you you but showed yeah. up on you you showed up on his radar, and clearly yeah. the man has plans for you slash yeah. Wow, well, gotta be real careful here." Yeah, well, either way, now it's now we get the vibe clearly he intended for us. It wasn't optional. But until this whole thing ended, it felt very, like, more so, like, kind of not empty threat, but more the, just like, I'm aware of you I, now, I, I did and that I know you did that, this way, uh, but I'm not going to follow you. Is, like, it's also kind of playing into that, like, that, that, like stereotypical uh, vampire thing of, like, oh, you're not going to invite me in? You know, it's giving, you the yeah. <laughs> giving you the illusion of choice. Giving you the illusion yeah, yeah, that you yeah. have a choice or you you know you, you have some power but then when it comes down yeah. to it you know i'll just fucking wait for you to go outside of your house to fucking yeah. kill you you know what i mean or yeah. do not something but point. it just felt very very like why are we gonna bother or like stir the waters in this still like we're, we're friends now but it's still a very tentative like friendship group mm -hmm. it's still new there's been lots of secrets there's been some infighting like you know so it's like why bother yeah bringing something up that we already have very little information on that we plan to potentially never pursue and could never come back to bother us. Like, what's the point? It wasn't like, mm -hmm. we think this is worth hiding. It wasn't malicious secret keeping. It was literally a, I, this isn't a problem. And for all we know, it never will be a problem. So why make it a problem? Mm -hmm. Also, and then the other part was like, if it is going to come up, like, Kess will probably spill the beans at some point. But then part of Daiga's mind was like, I'll just, I can let Kess take the fall for that a little bit. Because clearly she said multiple times where she just says shit, exposes secrets, and it had led to like our little fights both times. The so one big fight and one short lived fight. And so maybe there was still that one little petty, like, I'm not mad at you, but I'm still a little mad back of Daigon's brain being like, if it does come up, it's going to be Kess who spills it or drops it or takes the credit for it or mentions it. 
and I'm perfectly happy to let her <clears throat> take the heat for it in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question for you as well. Um, yeah. Do you have any predictions uh, on um, how Strahd, if at all... Well, okay, two-part question. Do you, ex <laughs> do, you, do you think Strahd is involved with the overlying storyline? And if so, how do you think he fits into this whole, like, power dynamic of elementals, dragons, new fucking world? Or do you think it's more of just like a, a side hustle? I think it's full-on, like, side. I'm sure he's connected, but I don't think he's connected to the elemental things that much, because you said he also had him prepared. This is a bit meta, but you had him prepared and ready and he was introduced in the Heroes of Exiles campaign, right? He yeah, wasn't introduced no, yeah, purely in this. So, so I, I don't think he's very he's linked. Canonized, like he exists, yeah. Yeah. Either way, I, I feel like he was more of a... Because like even in like other campaigns, even in, in movies, TV shows, any media, there's still the overarching like main plot. But then they still like even look at... Like my favorite show of all time is like Buffy. There's still the overarching big bad of each season. But then you get Monster of the Week for a lot of episodes as well. Like there's still the mayor or the master or like Dark Angel as the villains for the whole season. That's like our elemental draconic war storyline. But then each episode you still also have a threat to deal with. And mm -hmm. Strahd feels like one of those. A threat for you to grow in your own strength and explore and like tell some story. But he's not necessarily linked to this overarching Okay. plot that you found yourself in okay second question then what do you think he wants from you or the party um i mean like idea? vampires vampires are very can be not always can be very like just in my normal laura vampire fangirl brain all the vampire media and literature mm -hmm. i've absorbed in my life vampires are very very petty and very prideful and i do think it's purely just i considered that object even though it wasn't in my possession it belonged to me and now you've put it out of reach of my hands and i'm annoyed by that and it's like especially when you're at the top food chain the upper echelon of vampires and you're like the dracula-esque figure of this world basically then you, yeah. your pride's even bigger and it just feels very yeah, much like, like who strad, the fuck were no, you nobody's no one, no one out vampire me. strad like that he yeah. is the end all be all yeah and we were no one when we did this like <clears throat> we weren't already established names so it also just looks bad on on him and his image so i feel like it's very much just a pride image thing i don't think it's a like anything about us personally it's more of a i almost need to do this for my reputation like my the persona okay. i built demands i behave in this way mm -hmm. okay interesting um all right fair enough i mean we'll see whenever it comes up i had some questions for you about the house now that we're out of it like you said yeah. and so the <clears throat> sacrifice puzzle with like the little cult where they're like one of you have to like mm -hmm. sacrifice someone and we didn't so we fought that creature instead yes uh, and like, it got me thinking. And again, teaser for Nether Deep. It reminded me of a similar potential puzzle that mm -hmm. you could encounter in Nether Deep, which, without going into details, and there is a way around that puzzle that kind of fulfills what sounds like very permanent and sketchy and ominous, but in a different way. So, mm -hmm. is there a way that you feel comfortable answering that we could have achieved a in quotes sacrifice and not fought the thing that wouldn't have involved offing one of our group? Um, like, did it have the immortality blood thing or what could we have played the wording was there some other kind of sacrifice we could have made if we thought about it more it says here uh, I have the document open um, yeah. to count as a sacrifice a creature must die on the altar the apparitions don't care okay. what kind of creature is sacrificed and they are not fooled by illusions so it's just yeah. so you, Onu and, could have counted if we'd sacrificed Onu on the altar yeah yeah, technically. Hey, I yeah. was right. <laughs> like, you could have sacrificed a fucking rat. It was just uh, something had to die yeah. on that altar. Okay. To appease You couldn't appease be like, cult. my hopes and dreams and put like a physical object on there that was representative of like a thing you're going to no, do like, that you're giving up. It just says here, a okay. creature needs to die on the altar. So okay. So anything that is considered a creature would have been, would have counted. Okay. Um... Except if we'd done a spell, like say for, we had a druid or something. Except for the shambling, the shambling mount. That's yeah, the exception. Yeah, like say we had like a druid or something <laughs> in the party and they'd done a like summon creature spell. Would that also have counted? Kind um, of thing? Like, Is it considered a creature? I would assume so. I, I haven't played a druid for a while. I don't know. I so, as long recently. as it's considered a creature, then yes. All right, cool. 
So um, I'll t- I'll give you a bit of a uh, you know the history of of this house and 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 give you some because there's there were a lot of like questions of like what the fuck was happening here and a lot of things that you didn't really explore. There were a lot of like notes that would have explained a little more to you. Uh, so I'll give you a quick rundown of just like the TLDR of what the Death House is. Um, Death House is the name given to an old row house in the village of Barovia. Uh, the house has been burned to the ground many times, to only to rise from the ashes time and time again. Uh, by its own will or that of Strahd, locals give the building a white berth uh, for fear of antagonizing the evil spirits believed to haunt it. The wealthy family that built the house practiced the dark arts. Through seduction and indoctrination, they expanded their cults to include a small yet nefarious circle of friends. When word got out, the rest of the village turned a blind eye to the house and, uh, and the nightly debaucheries happening within it. The cult tried to summon malevolent extra planner Extra planar? Planar. Extra planar. Entities with no success. The cultists also preyed on visitors, sacrificed them in bizarre rituals, and hosted morbid banquets to feast on their corpses. When nothing came of these ritualized uh, murders, the cultist activities became thinly disguised excuses to indulge their... L- What's the word? Lurid fantasies. Never oh. used that word before. Um, the ranks of the cult thinned as members began to lose interest in the debacle. Uh, that's when Strahd von Zarevich arrived. Mm-hmm. The cultists regarded Strahd as a messiah, sent to them by the dark powers, drawn to Strahd like moths to a flame. They pledged their devotion to the promise of immortality, but Strahd turned them away, deeming the cult and its mm-hmm. leaders unworthy of his attention. The cultists withdrew to Death House in despair. The cult's habit of trapping and devouring wayward visitors proved to be its downfall. On one occasion, the cult snared a band of adventurers whom Strahd had lured to his domain to be his playthings. Uh, a black carriage arrived at Death House soon thereafter, and from uh, and from out of its black heart stepped the vampire himself. The cultists tried to impress Strahd. In response, he slaughtered them for slaying his playthings. Centuries later, the cultist spirits haunt the dungeons under the house, the building itself. It seems unwilling to let the cult be forgotten. So, the Durst family, basically, mm-hmm. were just sickos that f- <laughs> found this following of people... And sacrifice things in attempts to summon any, any extra planar being. Didn't matter who or what, yeah. as long as it did something. That yeah, kept something on failing cool that failing. can give us power. We don't care what it then is. Then Strahd rocked up, uh, and they were like, "Oh my God, this is this is our this is Jesus. This is him. This is it. This is our purpose." And then Strahd was like, <laughs> which also kind of came clear uh, through that letter that you found in game of like, yep. "Y'all ain't shit." I don't yeah. need you. Fuck off. And then sh- the reason they all got fucking murdered and died was because they killed a group of adventurers that Strahd summoned people. to be his playthings, and they kind of t- took them from him. And Strahd responded by fucking murdering all of them. And yeah. since then, uh, that was that was hundreds of years ago, and since then, their spirits have just been haunting the place. Uh, including... Uh, Rose and Thorn, uh, who got locked. Dude, that, that, that's sad. Rose and Thorn, fucking sad. Yeah. Fucking sad, dude. Um, Still evil. Oh. <laughs> innocent little kids whose parents just f- were fucked up in the head. And um, What was the deal with the baby? Spoiler, Why was the baby? Spoiler alert like, the about the kids. Um, parents locked them in there with no intent to ever let them go. Well, yeah, I knew that. Parents were just like, kids, yeah. lock him in there, fucking have him starve, don't care. Yep. What's the deal with the baby? Um. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> like, who? Did, did, did she get pregnant? Was she cheating on the dude? And then stra- like someone cursed the baby to be born dead because she cheated? Because there's something about like, I swear to God, the letter had something about unfaithful and like, it mentioned the re- like someone knew... Yeah, why yeah. or had caused the baby to be born uh let me quickly miscarry basically have a look, see. what was the deal with that thing ba, 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 ba. let me have a look let and why look. if they hated their kids like they were they sent us their kids basically to death hi kitty cat um they this baby but why did they have a picture of them with their kids and a dead baby that was ever like why it doesn't make any sense okay the master of the house, so Mr. Durst, and the yeah. nursemaid had an affair, which led to the birth of a stillborn Ooh. baby named Walter. Uh, the cult slew the nursemaid shortly thereafter, whose spirits you also encountered in the nursery, uh, with the bed and the oh, shroud. Okay. 
okay. And her corpse, you found stuffed in a coffin or in a in a in a coffer yeah. in that room that had the secret stairway all yeah. the way down. Um, so it wasn't Mrs. Durst that had the baby. It was the no. there was the maid it to was the Durst. Yeah, man of the house slept with the maid. Uh, so the cult slew the nursemaid shortly thereafter. Um, and yeah, the baby is stillborn. So like mum, or I guess mum, uh, Mrs. Durst knew full well what that baby was, and that's well, yeah, why that's why she it. looks so fucking like spiteful in the in the fucking painting. But why paint? the painting in the first place then like what who does that who fucking know. does that I don't, that's I, fucking Laura, weird i don't know <laughs> we'll just we'll just say that me, me um, and duke are both just hung up on this painting and just we're like, like let's just let's i think it's safe to say that judging from just like the tldr of like the history of the durst family is that they're just not yeah. they're not they're all just there fucked up. <laughs> they're not all there you know <laughs> okay yeah um, and then my other question was, you mentioned that there were some of the things the kids are supposed to do as written, but yes. you changed because it wasn't relevant to the story. So what, what's some of that? Okay. Um, upon entering their bedroom and discovering their corpses, mm -hmm. the girl, Rose, would have jumped into one of your bodies and possessed you from that point onwards with no ability to, to save from it. Oh, shit. Because... They have this, because of what happened to them, have this, like, intense fear of abandonment. So they were like, there's people in, a, in my huh. room. I don't want I'm them to go. You're not leaving. I don't <laughs> want them to go. So Rose would have jumped into one of you. Uh, and would have further cemented Daigon's, like, these kids are fucking yeah, evil, kill uh, them. <laughs> but would not have worked against you. And then he would have just completely gone through with whatever the fuck you guys want to do. Go through the basement. Yeah. And then the whole point of that would be, like, if you were to go to the room with their cop with their crypts, Rose would see that, and that would trigger this whole sequence of, like, this whole sequence yeah. of, like, persuading her to blah, 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 and she would, like, basically ask you guys, like, okay, can you go grab our bodies and just put us in our crypts and be done with it? Yeah, and that yeah. would have triggered them to move or move on to the hereafter or early, before fighting the monster yeah. in the... But um, I was like... Cool. Don't get me wrong. Cool. But also, I feel like it kind of... Because in the beginning of the, 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 the story, it kind of sets them up as these, like, innocent bystanders. And uh, it didn't make sense to me. And this is one of the qualms I had. It didn't make sense to me that they have these abandonment issues and they were like, they don't want you to leave, but then let you leave them. Yeah outside while you go inside mm -hmm. do all that shit on your own and then suddenly when you hit their bedroom they're like no don't leave like that didn't make sense to me so i was yeah. like eh, no, I'm gonna, eh, you know <laughs> doesn't didn't no. make sense to me didn't didn't click for me so i was like ah, we're not doing that it's dumb i disagree <laughs> um that whole thing of like that empty like slab by the way where where davian was like writing that was all that was all just like <laughs> it's just like, oh, he wants to write Strahd's name? Yeah, sure, I'll fucking, I'll fucking... Sure, I'll fuck around. <laughs> I'll fuck around, I'll, hum I'll humor him. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of rooms, and especially in the, uh, before the crypt, because you explored the crypt pretty thoroughly. Yeah. But the, like, first, second, and third floor of the house, barely. You just went straight up. You didn't touch the second floor at all. Um, barely touched the first floor. Barely touched the third floor. So there were a lot of rooms where you would have found like more dead members of the Durst family and just kind of, you would have okay. basically sp sporadically found members of the Durst family fucking with their yeah. throats slit throughout the house kind of thing. Uh, but you kind of just skipped right. all that. So, you know, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't fucking around. We like, didn't you like would, it. You would have found, interrupted like, our nap time. <laughs> you would have found like Mr. Durst, like, st I think stuffed in like... I think disembodied and stuffed in a ch in his own like chest at the foot of his own bed or some shit. Uh, not yes. his own bed, but the f no, at the foot of the bed of one of the maids, just like stuffed in there, disembodied yeah. and everything. You would have found. Uh... Oh, there was a thing where you you fought this mimic. And there was a yeah. a bedroom behind it. There was a certain trap that you didn't trigger, but uh, basically there was a trap there if you were to trigger it. Um. 
the wall would collapse and like the zombified corpses of Mrs. Durst and another member of the Durst family would just like crawl out the like clay wall and fight you and shit. Gross. Yeah, but that all didn't happen. Um, yeah, but overall, I, I stuck pretty close to um, the original writing because it, a lot of yeah. it's, you know, a lot of it was like, yeah, this is an okay side story to tell since we're basically kind of killing time until Soko is ready to sit down for a few weeks back to back so we can do the pirating thing properly. Yeah. Um, and also ties into there is a Strahd thing or storyline that is prepared and ready to go whenever the fuck y'all try to tackle that. Yeah. So I figured it should be fun. But there's definitely, especially the motivation from Strahd, because uh, at the end he gave you a letter. We said, hey, thanks for cleaning up some loose ends, ready to talk. Uh, I, have a, I have a request for something for you. When you're ready to talk, go to the Raven's Nest or something along those lines. Um, so, like, his motivations, you guys still don't exactly know, but nope. um, I do. Smile. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's basically the TLDR of, uh, of, of that whole spiel. Um, new segment. New segment, Pog. Ooh, hype. We do this thing now where we do where, where I present you with a couple of uh, what if scenarios, uh, it, you know D and D related, of course. Um, and the first one I want to ask you is: Say Daigon, you know, what if Daigon one day wakes up in our world, so the real world? Okay. What is one thing Daigon would absolutely hate that is common practice in our world? Oh, oh, that's this is one of those things that I'm sure if I was given like a day to think about it, I could probably come up with something like either really, really meaningful or deep or something really funny. But now it's like, <laughs> like there's so many things. My brain's just kind of freezing at the 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 thought of so many. Um, probably just how many. This is also just a bit of cynical lore. I'm just like, oh, how how many people constantly publicly all the time are getting away with breaking rules breaking the law breaking things doing things like from shallow things to like like J james charles still has a platform on youtube even though he's groomed multiple underage children that's fucked up and <laughs> people know this there's evidence he's getting away with it like donald trump many like decades of committed crimes that we know he's done getting away with it uh just not the, and the that, fact that it's just so easy of the fucking yeah states, like not only sake. people get away with it but getting rewarded because like her her lawful side and again then she who was innocent was accused of a crime and almost killed for something she didn't do and then here's just so many people from small trivial things to large scale that are just constantly yeah. publicly not being held accountable um mm -hmm. that um probably okay yeah is the first one. thing that comes to mind that's a good one. <laughs> um okay if you so laura would be mm -hmm. a ranger what would be your favorite terrain me yeah. uh probably <laughs> all, all everyone else in dungeons like bitching about the heat it would probably be like super hot beach or like almost like desert like just, i love Gross. the heat i live in i live in canada it gets minus Gross, fucking 40 okay dude. we get snow i Gross. hate the snow i can tell you my least favorite terrain would be <laughs> snow and mountains because fuck that but like probably tropical like beach or like like tropical like rainforesty jungle thing probably favorite train because a lot even like when i was a teenager and i competed in like track and field and cross country i would place so much better mm -hmm. on track meets on the days where it was like 30 plus humid x high than on the days where the weather was cooler because all the other runners would be so affected by the heat and i would not like my performance stays about the same because like i'll get really red and really sweaty but i don't give a fuck i will take the blistering heat i'll be sweating my ass off any day over the cold and everyone's all you could just put on layers you could do but i don't want to have to walk around like a marshmallow in five layers of clothing and even like we can only take so many layers of clothing off fuck it i'd rather walk around just be naked and sweaty but comfortable because I, I i can still be comfortable when i'm really hot i guess is the thing and so some people just can't handle it i hate I the can, heat man so. my like and my, <laughs> okay but my i kind of resonate with the whole yeah you, know, you just put on more clothes lol because that's the thing right when it's cold you can put on 10 pairs of socks. You could put on five shirts, two hoodies, whatever. But how practical it's, is that? Yeah, but yeah, okay, but, but at least you'll be warm. Whereas 
if it's blistering hot, there's only so much you can take off, man. Like, there is a point when... where you're naked, and there's nothing more you can do. This is as comfortable as you're gonna fucking get. <laughs> you go and take it's a still quick shower. Fucking ass. Yeah, you like go a take a hot shower, shower and you dip in the, the body of water. Day? What the fuck am I supposed to do with that, <laughs> man? Go to shower so many fucking times before I'm a fucking wrinkly you fucking become, shrimp. You become then, one of those like then, old ladies who walks around with those like portable fans on a lanyard and you can just fan yourself. Yeah, but that's the thing. <laughs> then you're not only fucking hot and uncomfortable, your fucking hands and toes will be all fucking wrinkly and will feel fucking annoying and like, you're even worse off. Because I get it. Yeah. Take very hot shower, then the heat feels less warm, and that is true. But that only lasts for so long, man. Well, I was, I was saying take a cold shower. Refreshing. No, the, 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 my theory is, if you take a very hot shower, you'll be warmer in the shower. So when you get out, the hot will be like, oh. No, that, that is also true. Nice. Because the way humans perceive temperature is we feel things relative to our own temperature. Like, we're not just feeling a raw... Like yeah. numbers, we're feeling the difference in degrees between our skin and our body and then exactly. the air that's touching it. So if you warm, that's why they say drinking hot drinks in the summer helps keep you cool because it raises your overall mm -hmm. internal temperature so the heat doesn't feel as extremely different. Yeah, so like so. I love, because I always, my I I take my showers at a ridiculously hot temperature because I'll, I'll be ah. like <laughs> fucking lobster red when I leave the shower. I'll easily <laughs> like, what I do when I shower is like, I start at 40 degrees. That's my starting temperature is 40. And then, like, every, like, minute or so, I just, like, a little hotter. A yeah. little hotter. See, I'm the opposite. Hotter. Not because I enjoy hot showers. So just, if I take a bath, like, if I'm doing a luxurious bubble bath because my hair is tied up, I'll mm -hmm. take, a, like, a lobster boiling hot bath. But showers, I shower in as cold water as possible because I dye my hair. And hot mm -hmm. water leaches more hair dye than cold water Fair does. Enough. So I've learned to shower in, like, like one time James was like, oh, leave the shower running. I'll go in after you. And then he goes, and I just hear him swear from the bathroom. He stepped into, like, probably to him an ice cold shower and was like, what the fuck? Yeah, so, like, <laughs> I love taking hot showers, no matter how warm it is. Because, and, like, it's so fucking nice to know that it's, like, next week when it's 37 degrees, uh, the first thing I'm doing when I wake up, right, is fucking taking... Uh, the hottest fucking sh actually probably not first thing when it gets to like the <laughs> hottest point of the day that's when i'll be like okay i'm yeah, gonna go yeah, for yeah. a fucking shower get blistering hot fucking walk out <laughs> looking like a fucking like a like a like a larry the lobster from fucking spongebob right <laughs> and just sit down and just be like be cool even though it's 37 degrees because my body yeah. is just so hot oh my god i can't fucking wait mm-hmm I I hate the heat, man. <laughs> I struggle so much because I'm fat. I am not in shape. Well, round is in shape, but that's besides the point. Um, I I do not do heat well. I start sweating. Yeah. I fucking smell like shit. I feel uncomfortable <laughs> because I have rolls. There's just a, a lot more like gaps and shit for sweat to just kind of collect and pull in. Fucking hate it. I mean, fucking hate it. Can relate to that part because oh man, the most, the least unflattering thing, the under boob sweat. Because that's again the the roll of my butt. Oh, and then yeah. and it shows on your shirt, and mm -hmm. then you just look gross, and you're like, yep. oh god. I always have this thing where I'm like, if I'm wearing a shirt and I'm sweating, it'll be like this, like it's like for some reason, it's just Mickey Mouse will show up on my shirt. I'll be like, I'll have like two sweat stains here and one bigger one here, and it's just Mickey Mouse is on my shirt all of a sudden. I don't know what. I don't. But know then you why. can play it off. It's a it's a design choice. And I Disney and I, I have a very hairy chest as well, so when that gets sweaty, it's just like it stays wet because of the hair. And it, oh my god, dude, fuck. Man. Anyways, God. Laura's weird, and favorite terrain as a ranger would be yeah. a tropical, beachfront, sandy, or something desert-like, some, something something sub-Saharan. Like, yeah, I kind of feel like this next question, I kind of, I have a prediction of what your answer will be, no. uh, but it is, um, if you had to choose like a classic D and D villain to work for, who would it be? No, many classic D and D villains is the problem. Okay, the I only mean, one I really think I know. Like, I know Vecna, I know Strahd. Uh, like, I'm sure if you say more, Orcus, I'll probably Tiamat, remember them. Um, okay. Okay, yeah. I know those. Um, any, but again, it's, it's, any dragon, it's really? cliche, but again, like, I've been obsessed with vampires since I saw the first Underworld movie as a child, so I'd probably be Strahd, <laughs> just because I, I have a thing for vampires. Like, it's... Uh, I wrote a whole... My favorite essay I ever wrote in... From primary school go, doing a master's degree so i have two post-secondary degrees and my favorite piece of academic writing i ever did was an essay about vampires and gothic literature mm -hmm. and vampirism being a metaphor for letting women be in control of their sexuality 
Uh, let's see, is there some other fucking loth, you know, spider mommy, kind of hot. Oh, no, fuck, mm, oh, <laughs> spiders, uh-uh. That's the, what would be your least favorite? Like, what's the one villain that you would, like, off yourself before working with her? Spidey lady. Mm -mm. I, no. I kind of fuck <laughs> with, uh, Asurarak. Um, with, uh, he's basically, uh, very Vecna-esque. Um, yeah. Because he is one of the very few mortal beings that is powerful enough to, to have fought and killed a god. Um, um, he basically, oh, what's his thing? He, uh, the Tomb of Horrors is a, is a, is a pretty, like, famous D&D, like, thing. Uh, yeah. Which is where he is from. That's his, like, like, story module or whatever the fuck. That's his lair, whatever. Um, and to date, one of the most dangerous dungeons in the history of D&D. Um, yeah. He's very, Okay. Very close to Vecna, how he was portrayed in Critical Role. This, like, mm -hmm. lich, fight god, win, now is god. That is literally Asurarak in, like, the canon D&D lores. Like, he is one of the very few mortal beings who have fought and killed a god. And is also a lich. So he's very close to what Vecna was in, 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 in Critical Role. Um, yeah. Uh, Demogorgon is a very cool villain, but also it's just one of those... I feel like working for something like that, which is just this big fuck off monster from the abyss that yeah. just kind of wants to kill things. Eh, you know. I think I th working for a dragon would be pretty cool as well. Was well, so it after Strahd? My next choice probably be Tiamat because I also yeah, know like Tiamat or just one of like her. the most brutal like red dragons or some shit. You know, kind of cool. Also, that makes sense because Laura Laura likes shiny things and Laura's a hoarder, so you know. That's yeah, fair. Yeah, fair. <laughs> and Tiamat, goddess of greed, uh, just give me all the things. Um. Orcus, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you know, nah. Um, yeah, that's the that is all the uh, what ifs that I have for you today. Uh, normally, this would be where we would end it, but we have a little time. We can we can you yeah. know if you want talk a little bit about the yeah. upcoming. Call of the Nether well, campaign. I, I was gonna say swap roles now. Laura gets to be kind yeah. of question asker since I'll be the DM of that campaign. Yeah. But I just want to ask you what your thought process was like, and tell us a bit about. Get you get to tease your character for Nether Deep, and then tell us a bit about what went into or like or what was your thought process, or did you have it? Did you have anything like you wanted to do? Because since you so often are DM and not a player. Did you immediately have like a character you knew you wanted to do, or did you take time? Did you have to take time to figure out what you um, wanted to play? For this? I well, f as far as like classes and shit goes, I'm a very big fan of martial classes, like fighters, rangers, yeah. uh, paladin. Paladins, I would class as martial because they are casters, but they're not casters. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yes, they have magic, but like it's not their. <laughs> Their, their main squeeze. Uh, I'm a fan of yeah. martial classes. I like to play characters that are big, strong, and kind of at the brunt of getting their ass whooped. Um, yeah. As like a, just from a player uh, perspective. As far as this character in particular goes, Fury, um, I really like Tieflings. I always, in like Elder Scrolls, I fucking love Argonians. Right? I always go for the, like, the race that is like... Yeah not very human in appearance yeah. other than other than their basic bipedal structure yeah exactly <laughs> i i don't know for some reason i always like fuck with the races that have a lot of prejudice against them for some reason because like argonians and the elder scrolls are like mm -hmm, fucking lizard oh but you a therapist have a lot of fun uh, unpacking that <laughs> <laughs> and uh tieflings obviously victim to a lot of racism and 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 yeah. and then prejudice especially from the religious uh um types yeah. in, in most D, D settings but there's something about tieflings that are like that i find so cool uh this whole like you are not alone <laughs> <laughs> this whole like um they're from the hells and they're basically the polar opposite of what an asimar is as whereas an asimar has like this divine celestial blood in them tieflings have the same thing but from creatures not so divine and not so celestial um 
And then when I kind of, okay, I wanted to go Tiefling, I was like, okay, what do I want to play? Fighter, looked at, I, I remember looking at Rune Knight uh, a, a yeah. while back, and I was like, I want to fucking play that, because like, how fucking badass is it? Um, <laughs> I'm also a big slut for Norse mythology, and the idea nice, of nice. like, big, you know, shield, sword, these like fucking runes that are like very Nordic like runes carved in, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you activate and draw power from. Because a lot of the the, the rune knight is all based on on giants. Uh, all the runes that you use in the rune knights are uh, um, subclass are all based on like giants and and that sort of thing. And giants in D and I always just kind of have that thing in my head that that's that's the Norse mythology of D and D is yeah. the giants and. Um, so there's some shit that I can do because we start at level three, right? Yes. Three. Yep. Three. So there's some shit that I can do. I have this. Uh, uh, where is it? Yeah. So I have this cloud rune that I can activate, which um, let's see. This rune emulates the deceptive magic used by cloud giants, and then I have a fire rune that is like, oh. Cool. This channels the masterful craftsmanship of great smiths. And the frost rune is like, this rune's magic evokes the might of those who survive in the wintry wilderness, such as frost giants. It's all very yeah. Norse mythology, cool. you know, like God Love of War, that. Ragnarok, and fucking the yeah, new God yeah, of yeah. War. That shit to me. And I'm just like, <gasps> just give me. Nice. So that's gonna be fucking, it's gonna be sick. So, and then when it came to my my character as a as a because i um uh, as a backstory that it, i was just kind of like okay because we're playing in you know critical role world you know what i mean for lack of a better term their their canon their canon so yep. to say so i was alexandria. like alexandria okay. alexandria right i forgot the fucking name yeah so i went for for I, I named him fury because i love the the like whole like vanity names that tieflings yeah, go for yeah. fucking love that shit so i named him fury to kind of indicate that he is a rough knows how to fight like that's kind of what that name kind of tells you first and foremost you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh then i went with like because i haven't i'll give you the like description of what he looks like i guess as a little teaser for for living yeah. on for what's come so he's redskin tiefling bright yellow eyes and to kind of play into that like norse shit he has like two long sort of blonde braids that kind of like drape from the top of his head down over his shoulders and chest so like Kind of okay. like that, like Viking, uh, that Viking vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, at the top of his head, at the base of the braids, there are two curled, like, ram-like horns uh, with some runes carved into them. Uh, there's a rune carved on the left horn that means that that's giant for storm, and then there's a, a rune carved on the other horn that means fury. So, like, storm yeah. because of his religion, because he worships yeah. uh, the storm yeah. lord. Um, and then the other horn is just his name, but in giant. Which I, uh, you know, a few battle scars on his face, one on his left cheek, one above his right eye, uh, kind of like cutting through the eyebrow kind of thing. Yeah. Also, always wearing this like dark red clothing over a well kept but battle worn set of chainmail. Uh, he has a kite shield on his back, long sword along his side, and two hand axes as well. And, um, you know, it's a long red tail, but around the tail, there's like a few silver bands that are kind of kind of decorated. So that's that's Ooh. basically that's what he looks like. So nice. I basically just made. I what if a tiefling would be a Viking is what I went for pretty, pretty much. I like it. I <laughs> like it. Sounds dope and it evokes an immediate, very clear visual even before you describe like what it looks like. I'm sure a lot of people could just get that yeah. one sentence elevator pitch and have an idea, which is yeah, exactly. great. Um, other question now that I've given you guys and no one sent me any suggested tweaks or desired changes. So at the mm -hmm. moment, what I sent you guys for how your party met mm -hmm. is currently is canon unless there's still chance it's not set in stone yet if y'all want to change it you can but no mm -hmm. one has so how do you feel are you at all nervous intimidated or are you excited that you and one of the other players are going to be the two with the longest like um history it's still not like you know you've had a long history with this person but the ones with the at least the most pre-established relationship well, or chance at a friendship than any other part i'm excited ever. because it's i i like i like the idea of um having a bit more of a bond with one of the people in the party. Uh, mm -hmm. The only reason is, like, I, I haven't met them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so... 
you know, but you know, and meeting new people is scary. Than's, than's great. He's I great. don't he's, doubt He's it, probably the like, one with the most D and D experience in the group. But meeting new I people think. sucks, so. Aura. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like I, but uh, I'm just kind of gonna fucking roll with it. I'm not gonna like, you know, you you know me. I fucking I do well <laughs> with anyone really. To a certain degree, and I'm okay. sure it'll be fine. Yeah. So like I'm yeah. just because I, I was looking for ways to make it so again there are slightly more complex than you've all been thrown together on day one on session one because I feel like it'll make for more interesting role play if I could find even start suggesting possible connections for you guys and some to have known each other even if it's only for a few days more than others. But I know also it's going to be a bit like stressful for uh, to RP that potentially. So if anyone had like if you or Than had sent to me like I don't know. I like the idea, but I, I just, that makes me very nervous trying kind of to sort of like RP. Nah, because one thing about me as well is I just... I could have changed it, but I like it this way. <laughs> no, because once I fucking put up the fucking Fury voice and get into character, then whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's more so, it's not like you guys have to even be like best buds by the time it starts. It's more just... I, I guess like, even more, it's like, uh, say in combat, if it's like two part of your party members, maybe you could help no, one or the I, other. I like, I've already I like given the, you a direction um, that you might lead. I like <laughs> the thing that links us is our religion, which I think can, yeah. can, can, uh, proc some fun, just dialogue and like, yeah, just some fun back and forth talking about yep. our boy, the storm Lord, while the rest of the gang is like, what? Uh, <clears throat> and we hail from the same uh the same area city. the same city as well yeah. which is cool so yeah. i like i like that common ground and there's just going to be like yeah. nothing super in depth but there's just going to be there's that makes the makes room for some back and forth between two characters yeah. um exactly yeah I'm here for cool it. and then i guess my last question and then if you have any questions about the campaign you want to ask me that obviously even though we haven't had session 1 yet but more about the general nature of it but my last thing for you was um do you have any like what's on your your wish list for this campaign is there anything that you're really hoping happens or you're most excited for and that with advance know. notice i can maybe try and make happen because for you because i have <laughs> read nothing about this campaign oh my gosh what the fuck hold on. what is my cat doing <clears throat> what bailey bailey what are you doing jesus <laughs> he's in my window in my curtain i see my curtains going nuts and i'm like what the hell Doing something. I think she was chasing maybe a fly in the window or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, <laughs> I don't know because I don't know any. I don't. I know fuck all about this campaign because I didn't read anything about it because I was like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna play this, so I'm not gonna <laughs> fucking. So I don't know fucking anything. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The, the, well, the, you know whatever you know from watching Critical Role about the world. That yeah, it's exactly. In. Which and I, and I sent you that video that I hope everyone has watched. Yeah, I've watched um, that. that but history like, video. But like, <laughs> as far as you know, plots, fucking. Th places uh, uh uh people maybe even less so about story then but just as a player like more just general almost like D, &D tropes is there anything you really want to, uh, to or, hope, are hoping or would love to happen i love puzzles dude i hope that oh, oh you're i hope good. that there's some good fucking <laughs> puzzle shit dude I literally the chapter i'm most excited for is chapter three does not mean it'll be session three because eh, but um chapter three has very old school, like proper elaborate dungeon delve kind of Fuck thing. Yes. And I lots of the love... rooms are like puzzle rooms. I love so... dungeon delving and puzzles. I fucking love that shit. Hell yeah. yeah. Um... I love it because I just love puzzles myself as well and seeing how people approach puzzles and listening to people <coughs> reason them out and see how their brain works different from the mine. Though... But also as a DM, I do the least work because I just go, here's the room. Here's what's in front of you. Have fun. And then I just the like sit is, there though, and watch Laura you try and K. solve it. <laughs> The thing is, right? Intelligence, wisdom are my dumb stats. <laughs> so I'm gonna really. I'll probably just metagame the fuck out of it and actively partake in the puzzle solving because I like puzzles. <laughs> so you're gonna just have to give me the pass there, you know. <laughs> That's fair. Sorry, I was petting my cat. I've right. been away from home for a week, so I haven't seen my cat very much. In um, Party Betrayal, Bowdy, I will literally <laughs> choke you tomorrow evening in Amsterdam, so you don't have to, you can't come to D&D. &D. <laughs> I was gonna say, no, I will, I, I don't think I would have invited both of you to be players, given your history, <laughs> if I knew, if I was gonna allow that to happen. <clears throat> um, 
Uh, but yeah, no, if you want puzzles, you're, this, this will not be combat only yeah. or like kind of campaign. There are definitely lots of puzzles for you, but specifically yeah. chapter three. I haven't read too much of the end. Like I've skimmed the end chapters. I don't want to read them too much until we get closer to it because of course they could happen lots of different ways. I don't want to read it and learn it and get it too stuck in my head from one perspective, but then your party's choices mean it goes in a very different direction and then it's like harder for me to mm -hmm. rethink it so i've only really in depth read the first few chapters and then just skimmed it and i'm like i'll read the other ones later once we progress and i can see kind of like which storyline or which what's the which um, kind of npcs you've chosen which blah 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 what's the like level out. advancements like what level rapid you'll be level like 12 or 14 by the end of the campaign cool. basically because... every session you level okay and it's gonna be wild because what is really cool about this like archetype is that it like it makes you're a proper like tank because at level oh, seven at level seven i get this really cool thing which is called runic shield which basically mm -hmm. just i can protect my allies so as long as people are within 60 feet of me and they're hit by an attack i can just use my reaction to force the attacker to re-roll oh, like backwards. that so, like okay. I'll, I'll proper i'll be able to like proper like help them not to get hit and shit so, I mean, it's something i'm but yeah you you'll be level 12 by the end of the campaign so. And I can use the, this feature a number of times equal to my precision bonus uh, every long rest. So it's not just like the one yep. and done. It's just whenever, like every uh, if my proficiency bonus at level seven, I think will be plus four. Yeah. So I'll be able to do it four times a day essentially. So that's pretty fucking cool. Nice. Um, well, yeah, you will be level twelve because you level up after every chapter, and then sometimes you will level up twice in a chapter. So it's mm -hmm. pretty rapid progression. <laughs> pretty crazy. So yeah, that, do you have anything you wanted to ask me about it? Because that was my kind of like questions oh, for dude. you. I just read something else. Sorry, I'm nerding out here. At level 10, I nah. get a, a rune knight feature called Great Stature, which is just mm -hmm. <laughs> the magic of your runes permanently alters you. When you gain this feature, roll 3d4 and you grow a number of inches e in height equal to the roll. <laughs> What? So I just you could just all of a sudden become seven feet tall, dude. Uh, moreover, <laughs> the extra damage I deal with my giant's might feature becomes 1d8 because I'm bigger. So, like, I literally just, I just grow because I, the <laughs> runes, I become big. I become a giant. I love it. Hog. Sick. I love it. Because I'm already um, Bowdy, fucking six foot. So that means if I roll yeah. really high, I'll you could literally be seven feet tall. Fucking hell. Jesus. Yep. Um, Bowdy asked how many chapters there are. So there are seven chapters in each chapter. So some chapters you'll level up, but there are some chapters you level up twice. Because obviously three to seven will only take you from levels three to seven. Uh, but some chapters, it'll tell you like halfway through based on what's happened. Yeah. You level up and then you level up again at the end kind of pog, thing. Pog, 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 Yeah, yeah. Pog. And it's also the first time I play, because when I go for, like, martial classes, I tend to go for, like, big two-hand weapon. But I went for, like, the sword and shield vibe this time, because I want to be more of, a, like, a proper tank instead of a glass okay. cannon. So yep. it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be Pog. It's going to be Pog. I'm excited. I'm hyped. Do you have any, any questions that either, like, for as a player or anything you just, like, want a tease on? Or is, like, there something you would, like, a sneak peek at that I could maybe do without giving away anything? Yeah. One thing, can you just like, can we just like, you know, just give me a, a very cool epic item and we just don't tell the party about it? <laughs> well, Bowdy's here, unfortunately, in the chat. I so can that's him. kind of. I can ban him. <laughs> just ban him temporarily. It's and then. But banned people can still watch your shit on Twitch, which is bullshit. <laughs> <sighs> I will say there is a chance to get a lot of magical items in this campaign. Like, there's a whole, on top of regular magical items that are just in D and D, there is a whole appendix in the back of this book that is just the magical, like just magic items they've added for this campaign, and that most of them, unless you really fuck up, your party will get the vast majority of these items at some point. In Hell the yeah! So. Hell yeah! Uh, no, that's it. I'm excited. I can't wait for next week. And yeah, I bought James an entire book of unique magical items as well. So I could also, if I Hell need to look up yeah. some shit, just Hell look through that. Hell <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking hyped. I'm super fucking hyped. Um, can't wait. Can't mm -hmm. wait. Yeah, the that's going to happen come July 23rd, baby. Hell yeah. Uh, and I think with that, we're going to call it here. Thanks, Laura, for, for being uh, the one and only guest today because uh, Bell called I feel special. 
was fun to talk about Dungeon Select and also the you know, transition into what's to come for uh, the Call of the Net Deep campaign, which I'm super fucking stoked for. Uh, so I think for now, we're going to throw a raid to Duke because he's live with his uh, podcast of the week. Uh, he's learning about... Yo. Duke's, Duke rock learns climbing. things. Great fucking podcast. He's learning about rock climbing today. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, so fucking let's go say hi to him. Uh, and uh, we'll be back here Monday for more Divinity because there's no DS this week. Sag, but I'll be at TwitchCon. So frick you. Um, thanks for watching. Appreciate ya. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Bye y'all. Du -du -du -dum. Bom, bom, bom. Gone? Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Du -du 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 -dum. And now slowly, like, fade out. Just like. <laughs>